This is a Terex RT-130 rough terrain crane. It was made by NZG. It's in 150 a scale. This crane is pretty cool. Now, as far as RT cranes go, typically uh, they've been made for a long time, you know, in, in die cast. But they weren't really great until TWH came along with the 40-ton Groves and NZG came out with these RT-130s from Terex. Now, like I said, historically, the die-cast models of RTs have been around for a long time, but they never really had uh, good functionality or any kind of detail. They were just sort of boring. And NZG really sort of upped the game, and TWH did as well with these RTs. Uh, right off the bat, this thing is heavy. It's surprisingly heavy. Um, the other thing that you notice right away is that the cab has so much more detail than any of the other RTs that had been made up until this point. Now this come out originally around 2010 or so. So this thing right now is 11 years old and it really does hold up pretty well by today's standards. There's a couple things that uh, aren't great or maybe just seem dated you know, by today. But this was one of the cranes that really ushered in the new, I, I guess you could say, era of diecast manufacturing where it's normal to expect uh, very good details and very fine details as well. And like I said, this was really the start of that. So one thing that's not great is the jib here doesn't pin in anywhere at all when it's stowed on the side of the boom. It just has this rack that it sits in and it's really just gravity that keeps it in. So we're going to pull it off right now because if we don't pull it off, it's going to fall off on its end. So, here you can look at the side of the boom. You can see the hydraulic lines running up to your winch motors, which is pretty cool. You can also see the, the detail in there for how you can drop the counterweight <clears throat> if you wanted to. Now, you can't drop the counterweight off of here. This is all uh, one big piece, but it's cool that they have the cylinders and the brackets there to do it if you wanted to. It's really uh, pretty nice. The paint and the decaling is all very good and very crisp. The casting is all really pretty nice. Like I said, the cab interior is really well done. It's cool that they have the weather striping, or striping on all the windows. The, the mirrors and the lights and everything look really pretty good. And as I said, it's so much better than any of the RTs that had really been done over the past 20 years prior to this. Now, this does still have the older style um, screw type cylinders for the outriggers, which isn't great, but again, at the time, that was normal. You know, everything now is the, uh, you still have, it's still the screw type, but the bottom half of the cylinder, uh, it, it looks like a normal hydraulic cylinder, even though the top half is still screws, but it's, it's hidden, so you don't see it. Uh, that really hadn't been normalized yet, but uh, they got there eventually. So this crane has actually been, it's been, I don't know if I want to say reproduced, but it's been in production a couple different times. The original run sold out pretty quick, and then they run it again, so you, you could actually buy them. And, uh, you know, for the original retail, which I want to say was like $170. Uh, when they first sold out, these were selling for close to $250, almost $300 at times. And then when they, they made another run, it was great to be able to get it at, you know, for $170. Because the retail hadn't really changed. And then, uh, you know, the same thing happened again. They sold out. The prices went back up. And I think they produced them a third time. I, I really can't remember it. But, my memory's kind of fuzzy, but they really are nice cranes. You can see the the hydraulic tank detail here, the breather, you know, on the cap. Here's the motor back here. The ladder and the handrail details are really pretty good. And again, this is far above and beyond what was normal at the time. And over here, you can see the itty bitty fuel tank. It's kind of funny to have, you know, it's pretty big crane with a teeny tiny little fuel tank but to be honest uh the crane will run for a long time on 50 gallons 
I, I think that's a 50 gallon. It might be 75, but I think it's a 50 gallon tank. For the most part, I, <laughs> there's no other way to say it. Most cranes spend the majority of their time at idle. You know, they might run full bore for you know a couple minutes here then they'll they'll idle for an hour then they'll run full bore for 10 minutes then they'll idle for another hour so like i said 50 gallons will get you pretty far all right so the model name is rt130 so obviously that means it's rt rough terrain uh it's meant to to be on job sites where it can kind of crawl around and go places that uh traditional like a, a hydraulic truck crane can't go or maybe even an all-terrain crane would have a hard time going that's why it's a rough terrain crane and the 130 means that it's good for 130 tons at 10 feet now 10 feet means that you're in between the outriggers not at the end of the outriggers but you're inside this square this is 10 feet 10 feet's probably like right about here as well. I think you have 26 feet from end to end. So if your center pin is in the center of this carrier, that means that 10 foot is right here. So being able to pick up 260,000 pounds right here isn't very useful, but that's how they rate these cranes. Uh, if you can get something in between the outriggers, great, you're all over it. But otherwise, you might be able to pick it up, but you're not going to go anywhere with it. The crane also has what's called a five-section boom. Now, five-section is a little misleading because it counts the base as a section. You really have four sections that telescope out that give you a total of 155 feet of main. Now, when you're working off a of main, that doesn't mean you can reach out 155 feet. I think the chart goes out to 140 feet, but... Personal preference, I've run a couple Terex uh, cranes, and I've never liked any of them. Uh, they're just, it, I think they're soft cranes. The ones that I've run, it actually says in the book that, uh, it, it's, a goofy, it's a goofy phrase, but like loss of pressure on an outrigger does not denote a loss in stability, which... Any job site you go to, that's a nightmare. Uh, the people that are in charge of, you know, crane safety on the job site typically don't know anything about cranes. And trying to explain to them that I'm working over an outrigger and the one beside, one directly behind me is floating in the air, but I'm still good for 3,000 pounds, that doesn't mean anything because it looks bad. You can argue up and down that it says it's it, it's it says it's okay in the book, but they're not going to agree with you because you have an outrigger floating in the air. But that's what happens with these Terexes. I just I can't explain it other than that they are just soft cranes. Uh, they're not. I don't think they're built as heavy as they should be. Altogether, this thing weighs about one hundred thirty thousand pounds. Ah, uh, maybe one hundred thirty-five. Which, for being a you know 130 ton crane, you know capable of picking up 260,000 pounds, it's really not very heavy, you know all things considered. Other other manufacturers that are rated a lot less, like for example, Link Belt, I think uh, comes out to be about 135,000 pounds, and it's only good for 200,000 pounds you know, by comparison. So having a lot more weight on the crane itself really does help with capacity. Maybe it doesn't help with the capacity, but it, it feels a heck of a lot better, especially when you are maxed out and, uh, you know, you need a little bit more. It feels better. Running Terexes just doesn't feel good. So you got 155 feet of main, but you can also add on the jib so the jib is pretty neat it adds an extra uh somewhere between 20 25 28 feet and 72 think 72 feet i think i'm not really sure what it is so you have your main section your secondary section and you also have a stinger with three different spots where you can pin it out and that's what gives you that extra 70 feet what's cool about these jibs is the way that they're put together with pins if you wanted to, you have the shivs here so you can run a half jib and uh, 
you know, you could stow this on the side of the boom if you wanted to, but it's not going to stay there. So I would, I would just leave it on the ground somewhere. But it's cool that you can do that if you want, if you wanted to. Now the real jib, you can unpin here, and you can all, you can run it straight, a 20 degree offset or a 40 degree offset. But here on the model, it's fixed in place, so you can only run it straight or zero degree or two, whatever it is. Uh, I'm not really terribly sure what it says in the manual, but it's it's, it's cool that uh, the jib is you can set it in a couple different positions the way it is. All right, there you can see with now you got the jib on, you got it maxed out, so you got a hundred and uh, an extra of seventy feet over top of your one hundred fifty five, so that's a hundred and twenty two hundred and twenty five feet. We got there eventually. Uh, so this is what it looks like fully stretched out, and it's pretty tall. Like, it's darn near five feet tall at this point. And that's about the maximum amount that it can boom down without falling over. Uh, that I mean, that is, if a butterfly landed on the tip, this thing's going over. So if you really want to have it stretched out, you got to have some somewhere good that you can put it and you got to run that boom straight up in the air or else it's, it's just going to fall over which is appropriate because it's a Terex. Now there are some really cool things that NZG did with this crane. So you can see up here you have two shivs on the top and you also have two winches down at the base of the boom. So what they did was they gave you the block which is cool you have a Let's see it's six shift block there and you also have a ball here so you can run both winches on the boom because you have two top uh, shivs up here and you have I don't know I guess that's probably six or so I can't count I think that's six maybe seven I can't see and I can't count it's a terrible terrible way to live so anyway uh, you can run the block here and you can run the ball as well if you wanted to it's going to be tricky because you don't have uh, an, an auxiliary or rooster shiv some people call it but it, you can do it something else you can do which is not not uncommon on jobs especially setting steel you can run like two or three parts in the block and have that hang and then you can run the jib out and have your your ball hanging on the jib so you can set steel and reach out when you need to and then unload trucks with the block when you have to and not and leave the jib on it's not uh <laughs> not a good way to do it but it's not unusual to see that uh i don't know if uh you really should be running it that way but you do see it the block is really pretty well done too really can't complain about it uh yeah as far as box go and especially you know, th this is a good 10 years old. Having the individual shivs, and I think these are metal, I don't think they're plastic. Having those individual and uh, just done well is unusual. You know, for 10 years ago, like I said, this really kind of ushered in the new era of uh, high detail, high functional cranes. And NZG did a great job with it. It really is a nice crane. Uh, now, like I said, I, I've never had a good experience with Terex cranes. The the ones that I, I run, they were just... If, if you could get them to run right, they just weren't great. They don't feel good. They, uh, they don't feel strong. They're very much a budget crane as far as I can tell. Uh, you know, and, and you, you certainly get what you pay for. Now... Terex did have a pretty fair stint with D-Mag, where I think all of the Terex all-terrains were actually D-Mags. And as far as I know, the D-Mag cranes are nice. But this, this is 100% Terex. The, the hydraulic truck cranes, they were 100% Terex. They weren't another manufacturer that got a Terex logo uh, just slapped on the side like the D-Mags were. Um, American, the American crawlers, those were Terexes, or labeled as Terexes, but they're American crawlers. Uh, so it, it's not not all Terexes are created equal, I guess you could say. 
Anyway, that's all I got for this. If you have any, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Uh, if there's something you'd like to see, let me know. I might just have it. If you want to see more of what I have, please subscribe to Maryland Construction Diecast. And as always, thanks for watching.